two of the previous climate casebook chapters, we looked at how global population was distributed across each climate zone, along with the relative sizes of these zones. Armed with this information, we can now reveal perhaps one of the most interesting metrics in human geography in relation to climate, the relationship between climate and population density, the key index of our planet's habitability. Following the episode on population distributions across climate zones, there were a number of requests to reveal perhaps the most telling of statistics, how climate might determine the number of people that can be supported in a given unit area. This would reveal which climate zones are favourable to human settlement and which ones are adverse. In short, the respective habitability of each climate zone. So, without further ado, I now present the list of least and most densely populated climate zones on Earth. At number 12, it is no surprise to find the ice cap as the least densely populated climate on our planet. With temperatures constantly below freezing, a continuous covering of ice and snow prevents any plant growth, with penguins being the only wildlife present in the desolate continent of Antarctica. With a population in the low thousands all being within the scientific community, these people are concentrated within isolated research stations, leaving the overwhelming majority of the ice sheet areas of Greenland and Antarctica being completely uninhabited. At number 11, and we have the next warmest zone, that of the frigid tundra wastes, where only a brief cool summer acts as a respite against the otherwise perpetually frozen conditions. Naturally, such an inhospitable climate supports a very low population, comprising mostly of Inuit in the north of Canada and Alaska, the Sami of northern Norway and Finland, and the Nenets of northern Russia. The other significant population is split in a small area between Chile and Argentina in, in Tierra del Fuego at the southernmost tip of South America, in what is really a colder form of the oceanic climate without the frigid winters of the Arctic tundra. Spread over such a vast area, this naturally produces a very low population density, but still orders of magnitude up from the ice cap. Note that the values of this and the ice cap are inverse, showing the number of square kilometers per person and not the usual persons per square kilometer. At number 10, and once again we progress to the next warmer zone, that of the subarctic. Spread over a vast area of North America and Eurasia, its population is in the millions, so the density is orders of magnitude higher than the tundra. Although this figure is deceptive, as the vast majority of these millions live within the few cities in this zone, leaving most of the endless wilderness of the boreal forests just that, empty. At number 9, with just over 20 people per square kilometre, and we increase our population density again by at least an order of magnitude, with the inhabitants of the cool desert regions deep within the northern continents and on the dry sides of mountains. With arid conditions combined with freezing winters, it's no surprise that this is the least hospitable climate zone outside of the polar regions of our planet as measured by population density. Still, the total population does number a third of a billion, and so these vast regions are home to a significant proportion of Earth's population. At number 8, and we have the other form of deserts on our planet, those with searing summer temperatures but without the freezing winters, the largest of all climate zones, the hot desert. Remarkably, almost a billion are spread out over the hottest and driest parts of the world, a testament to the ingenuity of our species. However, as always, average figures can be deceptive, as most of this population is confined to densely packed areas around rivers such as the Nile, Indus and Tigris-Euphrates, leaving the vast majority of the desert areas devoid of habitation. Next on our list, and we go from among the driest to the wettest of all climates with the tropical rainforest. Only a fraction of the size of the hot deserts, the rainforests support also a fraction of the population, and so are only marginally higher in terms of population density. The steamy jungles of the equatorial regions are not a biome that is suitable for human habitation, being filled with disease, biting critters, and a thick undergrowth that only understands the blade of a machete knife. On to number 6 now, and we're into our final half, where we find the most densely populated zones on Earth. The first of these is the continental climate of the interior of the northern continents, characterized by cold winters but warm to hot summers. The heartlands of the United States, Canada and Russia are within this large zone which sports a large population also, providing a population density double that of the tropical rainforest. Unlike the preceding zones, 
Here the population is not just confined to cities, but also spread out across the vast plains in the form of farms and market towns, as this zone is the first in our list to be dominated by agriculture. As we move to number 5, we increase the population density again by half, with the tropical wet and dry climates, the monsoon and savanna. This is both the second largest and second most populated of all zones, and so is among the world's most important, covering a huge number of countries across the tropics. Fertile conditions for growing crops such as rice and corn are however mitigated by the presence of tropical diseases, which push this zone down in the list of population density as a result. On to number 4 now, and the next three zones are the three smallest, starting with the oceanic of the maritime continental west coasts. Cool winters and warm summers together with the year-round rain yield the perfect conditions for a rich array of agriculture, but also free from tropical diseases. Most of the people in this zone are packed within one of the most densely populated regions on the planet, Northwest Europe. With a slightly denser population at number 3, and we have the Oceanic's hotter and drier neighbour, the Mediterranean climate zone. With its unique dry summer conditions, agriculture is more of a challenge than the Oceanic, but with the right irrigation flourishes under the sunnier days. Perhaps this more desirable climate has offset any agricultural challenges in giving this zone a more than equal population density compared to its wetter northern neighbour. At number 2, and we have the last in the trio of small climate zones, that of the subtropical highlands. Nestled in the uplands of the tropics, enjoying year-round mild temperatures and being free from much of the diseases of the tropics, it's no wonder that this zone supports a population density four times that of the tropical rainforest and 50% more than the tropical wet and dry climates. Major cities such as Mexico City, Bogota, Quito and Addis Ababa are surrounded by fertile farmland where the majority of the world's coffee and tea are grown. And so we come to the most densely populated climate zone of all. And it's really in a league of its own. It's the zone with the largest population but having a land area only half that of the tropical wet and dry. It is a climate type that most of you new to this channel would have never have heard of, but which has now achieved somewhat of a celebrity status here. It's the humid subtropical of hard summers, cool winters and plenty of rain. Occupying every eastern continental margin just above the tropics, it's no surprise that this zone, having 50% higher density than the next highest zone, tops out this list, with the enormous populations of China and India packed into relatively small areas along the Yangtze, Pearl and Ganges rivers. In these regions, the most important of all world crops, rice, can grow easily. But unlike in other zones where this crop thrives, the cool winters kill off much of the disease that plagues its more tropical neighbours, improving life expectancy, and so boosting population density. So with all our zones now calculated, let's perform an overall comparison in our final graphic, which is probably the most telling and interesting in all of the videos I have so far produced. Because in it we can see a clear relationship of how human habitability is affected by climate. The most densely populated zone, the humid subtropical, is 2 million times greater in density than that of the least, the ice cap. That's an enormous leap in terms of orders of magnitude. Most of these orders are consumed within the polar regions of the planet however, leaving most climate zones in the same order of magnitude from the cool desert up. It's clear that a lack of temperature and water are the enemies of human habitation, with the deserts and polar regions all being at the bottom. However, the effect of cold temperatures is much much greater than that of aridity, which is an interesting finding in and of itself, because technology is able to arrange for the channeling of water much more easily than the rather impossible task of warming the atmosphere. The top four most habitable zones are all temperate, featuring mild temperatures and sufficient rainfall, escaping the diseases of the tropics, supporting rich agricultural systems and generally being pleasant places to live. On that very last statement, I know some of you have already made plain your complaints of the pleasantness of the humid subtropical, but I bet that if we did a survey, three out of four of the top climate zones listed here would all be in the top of your lists. You're all free to share these in the comments by the way, it'll be an interesting exercise in human perception of climate. So that brings to a close the mini-series of videos about population and area metrics of climate zones. I hope you found this conclusion interesting, as I'm not aware of this analysis being done in any notable form elsewhere. So do share this video with your friends or fellow students to impress them with your exclusive find. Thanks again for watching. 
I'll be taking a break from the Climate Casebook for the moment, as I'll be launching a brand new series next month, but there will be more on aspects of climate in the future. To ensure you don't miss all the excitement, make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you aren't already. Until then, stay green.